Yo, Pit Boss Nation, what is cracking? I am Alton, aka The Dog Father's Barbecue, and welcome back to another episode of Backyard Bosses. Today we are out here on Barbecue Boulevard, and we've got our uh, Pit Boss Pro Series 1600 fired up. Why? We're talking beef ribs today, guys. That's right, beef ribs. You with it? Let's get it. All right, that's right. We are doing some beef ribs today, guys. And you know, I always hear from people that uh, they love beef ribs, but they have a hard time cooking beef ribs. And I'm gonna show you today, it's very simple. Beef ribs are very simple to cook. That's right, I said that, and I'm gonna show you today. And uh, hey, it's always gonna be a breeze when you're rolling with a Pit Boss Pro Series 1600. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get these ribs seasoned up and get them on the grill. Let's go. These are beef back ribs, and they're a lot less expensive than the, uh, the uh, plate ribs. And uh, hey, that means they're easier on the wallet, and they're plenty meaty. Uh, you can see there's just a good size to them guys and uh, these are going to be an excellent rib So all we're going to need for this recipe is we've got our beef ribs here We're going to be using our pit boss uh, Texas barbecue rub as well as some 16 mesh black pepper again. I'm here in Texas. We love this pepper. So that's what we're going to put on Okay, I'm just curious. So whenever you make beef ribs, what is your go-to rub? Put it down there in the comments section. Let's talk about it. All right, back to seasoning. Now, do we need a binder? No. If you can see here, th these ribs are very tacky and moist, so we're not gonna need a binder. We're not gonna take off the, uh, the membrane because that's what's gonna hold these beef ribs together. So, first thing up, we're gonna start to apply our, our uh, pepper. So we're gonna get a good dose of pepper put on here. Now we're not gonna go super heavy on the back side because after all, we're not really eating the whole back side, so we're not gonna worry about it too much. Next up, we're gonna get our Texas barbecue rub on from uh, Pit Boss. This has a good color to it. If you can see that there, it's got a good color. And uh, man, it's got a good smokiness to it. It's got a good sweet and uh, savory to it, so it's gonna be a good rub for this. So we're gonna get some of this sprinkled on here. Again, we're not gonna go super heavy on the back, but we've got a good dosing there. And we're gonna get on this uh, meat side here. And again, we're gonna start with our pepper. Gotta love this 16 mesh black pepper, guys. If you haven't tried it, you gotta try it. All right, so we've got our pepper on here. I'm gonna go a little extra just cause, you know, I like that. And we're gonna get our Texas rub on here. And we're gonna give it a good coating there. Now, believe it or not, that's it. That's all we're gonna do to these ribs. We've got them rubbed with our Texas rub. We've got some black pepper on here, and that is pretty much it. I'll kind of dab this around on the foil here and pick up some of this extra rub that's there, just to kind of get some here at the end of these bones. But that's it. So we got our grill already lit to 275, so we're gonna get these on the pit. All right, so we are at the grill. Again, we're rolling this grill at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, we're getting these ribs on. As you can see, I did put aluminum foil down here. It's not a must, but I like to keep the grill clean. So I've got some foil down here to catch these drippings from the rib. And um, guys, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and close this grill up and uh, let this Pit Boss uh, Pro Series 1600 do what it does. All right, so just that easy, we got these ribs on our grill. Again, we are rolling at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And guys, that's pretty much it. We're gonna let these things just uh, soak up some smoke and get that heat. We're gonna check on them every now and then. Probably we won't see these ribs for a good three hours now. And uh, at that point, we'll assess whether or not we need to spritz them if they're getting dry. Uh, but in my experience, these are gonna be some good meaty uh, ribs that are not going to be too dry at all so maybe we might not have to spritz if we do spritz we're going to spritz with water we're going to keep this very basic very simple and so hey i'll see you guys in three hours or actually here in a second or two but three hours from me but you know what i mean see you in a second <laughs>
All right, guys, we just passed the three hour mark of this cook. Now I gave you a little sneak peek there at two hours and then we came back at three hours. I did decide to go ahead and uh, spritz with water uh, just to keep the ribs moist. Uh, I figure at the three hour mark, our rub would be nice and set so that if we did spritz, we wouldn't damage our bark that we're developing by uh, spritzing too early. So three hour mark was good enough. The bark seemed to be set well enough. The, seasoning was stuck or adhered to the meat well enough that we went ahead and spritzed. Now at this point, it's just gonna be babysit these ribs until they get to the tenderness that we're looking for. I'm not gonna wrap them or any of that stuff. We are gonna leave them on the pit. We're gonna let it keep rolling at 275 until we get to the tenderness that we're looking for. And once we get to that point, I'll bring you guys back and we'll finish up this cook and get into some beef ribs. All right, see you in a bit. All right, guys, we just hit our five and a half hour mark. And uh, here's what our ribs are looking like here. And we're gonna check them for tenderness. Now, I'm using a meat probe, but I really don't care what the internal temperature is. I am merely just checking to see how easy the probe is sliding into the meat. There's no resistance there whatsoever. So I know that this is gonna be a tender rib for me. And so I'm gonna get these ribs off. We're gonna get them off and we're gonna get them rested so that we can uh, taste these ribs, guys. So bring you back in a second. Now we've got our ribs here. They've rested now for about 20, 30 minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and get some cut because man, I'm ready to taste these ribs. So let's get them out of this foil. Here is what we got on these ribs. And they smell really, really good. That man, that Texas barbecue rub really smells good. So let's see if we can get one cut off of here. I'm gonna try to get close to this bone because I want a big rib here. Let's do what we call that Hollywood cut. All right. All right, so here's our rib, guys. That's what we got going on here. I know it wasn't the best to cut, but it's okay. It's all gonna eat the same, but you can get a good look at that rib right there. And again, this was very simple. We just applied this uh, Texas barbecue rub along with some black pepper and put it on the pit. Just let the uh, Pro Series 1600 do its job. So, uh, man, let's get a bite of this. All right, guys, cheers. Wait, before I bite into this, Guys, if you're enjoying uh, this series, this uh, Backyard Bosses series, as well as all things barbecue and you want to level up your game, make sure you subscribe to this Pit Boss channel. Turn on that bell so that you get notified every time one of these uh, Backyard Boss videos get loaded up and uh, you'll be in the know. So hey, until I see you guys in the next video, cheers. About to get into this beef rib. Damn, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> 